Hey, g'day guys. Calvin from the Cartoon Company in New Zealand. So the sun is setting. And the temperature's starting to drop. But I've got a car that needs wiring. So work does continue. I've been wiring up a Link Thunder ECU onto a 1UZ VVTi engine. Well, the engine's actually a 3UZ, but I've set it up like a 1UZ with the 1UZ throttle body. So I've been doing a video on the main wiring. And it's looking like that. We've got the, uh, the Link Thunder there. And this is what the wiring loom is, is presently looking like. Not everything is plugged in. I've got a bit more testing to do yet. That goes up to the ECU. So the next step for me is to connect those three plugs to a relay box and fuse box and make it all work. It's pretty simple. Connect the wires, put the power, vroom vroom, make it go. We're going to work through today and show a little bit about this setup. If you're wiring an ECU, I would expect you to know how a relay works. I would expect you to know how fuses work and where they should and shouldn't go. So I'm going to give you a brief rundown of how to set it all up and what I do. Once it's all good, we'll power it up and see how it looks. If you're watching this video and wondering why I'm at this point, well, there's other videos on the wiring and connection for the Link ECU. And the information swaps to any model of car. It just happens that I do 1UZs a lot. For me, the same process applies to wiring of all ECUs. So the first thing I've done, grabbed a piece of paper, scribbled out some hieroglyphics, just some general notes, a bit of brainstorming of, of what relays I want and what fuses I want. It doesn't have to be neat, but it does have to have all the info. Then I'm going to start and start running wires. Basically, power supplies from the fuses to the, to the harness, we'll say it in American, and to the harness, I do realize that sometimes, of course, I say Kiwi, and over here it's a loom. And I have to remember that everyone around the world has a different word for the, the wiry bits that go to the engine. And of course, some of us call it a motor, but I prefer the word engine. So, I'm getting into this. I'm going to start connecting some power feeds, running some wires, and I'll give you a little bit of information as I go through. I've been doing some work. I have a fuse box coming together. So at this point, what I've got is some relays for the ignition system. And they've got outputs going for coils and injectors. So that's pretty straightforward. The big relays at the top here, two relays for fan, for different fans. And I've got two switches coming from the auxiliary outputs on the ECU. And the same for the fuel pump. So there's fuel pump, goes down to a fuse. And then there's an output here for the fuel pump. There's the outputs for the fans. Got a start relay. One thing to note is we have this fella here. This is my EFI relay, and then it provides voltage to the positive side of the relay. So that same output from here, that's an output, becomes the input for here. And that just prevents back feeds on the auxiliary channels. There is information in PC Link on the power grounding. So if you pop into PC Link, you can get all the different ways of wiring it. I'll be using the Thunder. 
So I'm going to wire it like this one. This one happens to be, uh, was that a positive one? No, I'm going to be using this one for the thunder. That one there. Alright guys, just quickly on finding the help file in PC Link. Open the program, PC Link, help file. There we go. Wiring information. Yes, yes please. Wiring information, and we double click. There it goes, a whole lot of information. Power and ground wiring. Yes, you hold. Here we go. We've got some diagrams, bit of information. Thunder, low side, it's what we were using. I hope that helps. Lots of helpful information in here on how to set everything up and how to wire it. And right at this moment, I'm wiring up the OBD2 plug just to run this little dongle here. Allows access to the smartphone into the into the ECU. So whilst this is a race car, and this is sort of a, a little extra thing, it might be handy if they get to the racetrack, something goes wrong, laptop, they want to just check a couple of things. The guys can do it with their smartphone. So really simple, following the instructions, there's a couple of grounds, best run to the ECU signal ground, though it will work just fine on a chassis ground, there's a 12 volt supply, can high at the top in pin 6 of the plug, and directly below it, can low in pin 14, so that's the OBD two plug done and that'll plug in so a lot of these little dongles communicate at 500 kilobits whereas the main can and like the can lambdas or the dash often communicate at one megabit so to, to avoid having to change communication speeds for all the devices I've just opted to run two different CAN channels, and that it just makes it easier. Though I have gone through the process of changing communication speeds, it was just a, a bit of a pain. So this is much simpler. Right, time to run a few more wires. And so I've been making quite good progress on the fuse box. We now look like this. So I have a, a relay over here, which is the uh, main EFI relay for the ECU. But a drive-by-wire relay. The drive-by-wire relay must be controlled by the ECU. Then if it has any faults, it can use the safety feature and it turns off the power supply to the ECU as a double check, shutting down the drive-by-wire. So that's very, very important from a safety point of view. This one I have a relay for the wideband sensors. I'm using quite small relays, so I'm just taking that precaution. And then I've got a left hand and a right hand relay for coils and injectors and an ignition relay. Up in this department, fuel pump relay. The earth is supplied by the ECU, so it's ECU controlled. Two fan relays, so again, they're both ECU controlled, and a start relay to ensure best starting. So all pretty simple. I generally use the diagrams that are available from Link. I often have the fuses after the relays though. Doesn't make a difference, just personal preference. Personal preference. So I've got 16 fuses, I've got 9 relays that will be used, I think that's what I've got, I'll check once I put them in. I've used one CAN channel for the dongle, and the other CAN channel 
along with some power supplies and an earth, come out to this plug, which are going to go to the dash. So by default, I've wired the dash as well. Next thing I'm going to do is terminate up these wires here, which plug into the main loom, and then we'll come back and do a little bit of testing. We have some plugs fitted. I've got the big main power wire going in. All these white wires are main power into the box. There's an earth in the box in here. There. One for the dash. And one for the control panel, wherever that is. All the locks are in place, and I have my test light ready to do testing. Mm. Yep, 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 yep. Oh man, oh yeah, it's gonna go in there, but just not very nice. There it is. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, and yep. Oh. So it's it's getting pretty late here. And I don't think that testing whilst being tired is a good idea. So I'm gonna call it a night. We'll be back in the morning to do some testing. Have a work out where things are meant to go. I'd really like to spend a bit more time talking about relays and fuses and, and how to wire that stuff up. But I really think it needs to be broken down a bit further. So I apologize to the guys that wanted a lot more detail in this video, but time is a factor as well. I've got a few more link wiring jobs coming up, but we'll, uh, we'll get this one tested. I'll do some setup. We're gonna set up that dash, make that engine run, ready to go in a box so I'm pretty excited to get this one done it's been a pretty mammoth effort and uh, it'll be good to to see this car up and running so good night to all and we'll be back in the morning to do this testing bang some fuses in and bang some relays in which there happens to be 10 of them I got to 10 Sleep's overrated, let's get back into some work. I've got some fuses, got my fuse box, got some relays, got the power pack, it's powered up. Let's do some testing and see what happens. Start off, I check that I've got main battery power, where everywhere main battery power should be. Coming in through this plug here, which is going to get one of these clips, good for 70 amps. It's a nice simple solution that makes this whole unit removable if necessary. Okay. If I get my one here, and I get a clip. I get ignition. That's where we got one in it. And we give it some voltage. And nothing happens. We should have voltage to here. We do.
And this should liven up one of these. There. Perfect. And it should liven up ignition over here. Now this, this ECU relay, not only does it power this as per the diagrams, but it also powers up all the others. And that stops these back feeds happening. So now I'll have voltage. Oh, no, I won't. Do you know what's missing? The earths are there. With the earth added, I check power, voltage out here. And I'm going to go through and test this whole circuit. So that's starting to happen. The drive-by wire relay won't power up until the ECU is plugged in. Same as the EFI relay, but I've got it jumped underneath. With that one plugged in, I should have voltage to my wideband sensors. On pin four, we need to put the fuse in. Now we should have voltage at pin four. There we go. That's good. So this is an ignition relay. And it will power up a coil or an injector. It's a coil for there. This one will be injectors on the same side. The next relay goes in. I've chosen to split up the coils and injectors. I've done so, so if there is ever an issue, diagnosis of this car is going to be as fast as it can be being a race car we want them to be easy to work on ideally this one wouldn't have got a fuse box like this it would have got a pdm but with any job we can't always have the the perfect answer so a set of relays and fuses is very easy to work with and i have wired it in a way that later on a PDM would be very easy to fit to this VF. For those of you that don't know what a PDM is, it's a power distribution module. It's like another little computer that takes care of relays and fuses. And you can monitor the, the amperage of every circuit. But this is going to work really, really well. And I've done a lot of them. So I pretty much just work my way through. I'm going to power up the ECU very soon. And we're going to put that in a different video. So I'm going to finish my testing. Check I've got voltage everywhere I want to hit voltage. And then start plugging stuff up. And then I'll do a separate one, as I said, on setting up that ECU and checking everything. Which is kind of like what I'm doing now, but with the ECU. Check I've got voltage at the ECU here. I do. That's that one and that one. 
Oh, tornado. Don't need to check that one with the test light. Perfect. Yesterday, when I was working all this, I was thinking about video ideas, and one of the thoughts I had was infant failure. So that's when you fit a brand new part and it doesn't work. And it happens more often than you might think. And that's one of the reasons I go through and I test it. This wasn't planned, but I've got a relay that doesn't work. Or I've stuffed up my wiring. So let's go through, have a bit of a look. I'm pretty sure it's a stud relay and I'll just show you a little bit about it. And using a good system of testing, it took me about 30 seconds, maybe a minute, to work out what the issue was. I'll show you what I found. As you can see, I flipped the relay box so I can access it. I've got a test light and a second test light. Along the back here, I have my relays that are negative switched so I've got voltage here I've got voltage in there and this is my output so that one works that one works this is my start relay so I've got voltage in there's an earth on this side here's my output and I energize it here now I can hear that clicking, but my, oh there it goes, now it decides to light up. So as you might have seen, hopefully, initially it wasn't working, oh there it goes, look. It's working more consistently. But the first little fire up, it would not work. The way now, I would say that one had a bit of dirt on a contact. I'm not taking the risk. It's going in the rubbish and I'm fitting a, a brand, brand new one. Hopefully it showed that it didn't always work. It was really consistently not working to begin with. Once I gave it a bit more of a click on and off, fired those contacts open and shut, it decided it was going to work. As I said, I'm not going to take that risk. It's a valuable job. We don't want failures. I'm going to go get a new, new relay and recheck it. Now, I actually found it. I could hear the relay clicking. I found it because I've got that start signal going to the ECU and I was going to check that and I couldn't find it. So pretty straightforward, problem solved in the workshop before it got into the car. Now that's more like it. Sliding in the fuel pump and fan relays, the two test like thing. This is fuel pump, this is fan, oh you wouldn't believe it, oh that's okay.
That's okay. I might have just been in the wrong hole. Oh, it's all good. I was just in the wrong hole. Okay. I'm now happy with the relay and fuse box. And I'm ready to plug that ECU in and set that up and configure it. So look out for the next video where I do that setup. And uh, hope this has been helpful. We'll talk to you again soon.